Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Lee. And if you have been following me, you probably know that I am a fully qualified actuary with the Society of Actuaries and the Canadian Institute of Actuaries. And I also have an ABA and a CFA on top of that. So I have always been working full time and studying part time. Oh no, studying sometimes is a full time job of itself. Videos about uh, so me sharing my experiences studying for the actual exams and the CFA exams. So hopefully you will enjoy it. And again, if you find it helpful, don't forget to like the video and uh, subscribe and turn on the notification button for uh, more weekly videos. Warning: The next few minutes contain very biased opinions of an actuary. From my knowledge, if you are interested in traditional finance roles like a financial analyst, a financial advisor, working in investments or bank, having a CFA is uh, very useful and uh, recommended. But if you are interested more in the investment area or the finance area in the insurance uh, or pension companies, having actual destination is more useful, especially uh, they have the investment or the corporate finance track with the society of actuaries. So I would say the CFA exams focus more on the asset side, while the actual exam focus more on the liability side. I want to clarify that I only pursue the CFA exams after I already got all of my actual designation. So the FSA, the FCIA, and the SERA. Uh, I know some of the people right now actually study for actual exams and the CFA exam at the same time, but that was not the case for me. I wanted to finish uh, all of my actual exam first because like my primary original goal was still to become an actuary so I want to get that out of the way before I continue uh, doing further education in other subjects and why I wanted to pursue a CFA is because like I have always been interested in the finance and investment area uh, but I don't really want to be uh, uh, getting into like very technical and quantitative job like uh, quantitative finance or quantitative investment that's why I did not do the quantitative uh, finance and investment track of the society of actuaries but rather I chose the uh, corporate finance and enterprise risk management area so if I have to compare the different tracks uh, of the SOA against the CFA like the actual exam for sure are more mathematical uh, driven and more uh, technical in that aspect compared to the CFA exam. But we think the SOA like FSA tracks, the investment track is definitely more uh, heavier math and heavier like a finance quantitative finance uh, concepts and theory compared to the corporate finance and EM track which is like more uh, risk areas and more, for me like it's more business um, driven uh, concepts and that so it's less technical in that aspect and uh, that's also the reason why I chose to uh, supplement um, my uh, my market risk uh, knowledge in finance area with the CFA exams afterward because it helped me with the market and graded risk uh, because I I have always been interested in the risk management areas, uh, specialization of, uh, of an actuary profession. And that is where I'm currently working right now is in actually in the enterprise risk management of a life insurance company. So for me, the CFA is aimed like help with that aspect. I know a couple more actuaries at my company have a CFA exam. So some of them are in risk. Uh, management as well and uh, they will be working in the investment area of risk so like looking at the uh, market risk uh, so like the equity risk uh, currency risk uh, liquidity risk and then some people um, have the CFA working in the assets liability management and then also in pension personally I think like having a CFA uh, is an added bonus uh, for the air uh, for your professional path if you are interested in certain uh, areas related to finance and investment. Why did I go into the actual profession rather than the, getting a job in the finance uh, field? Uh, first, because uh, I still do like math um, overall. So math has always been my favorite subject. And I do like the fact that actually like 
actual profession is about combinations of math and business is actually more like a business role rather than like a heavy math quantitative uh, role like yes you do need to have like a strong analytical skill and problem solving skills and uh, some of the depend on the role some of the roles can be very technical but i would still consider this is a business job but you, you still need to like math to become an actuary in my opinion so because i like math this is a great career option for myself and also i got a job as a, an actuary job when um, when I was uh, having co-op uh, during as part of my undergraduate program and I enjoy it. So I think it's a nice balance between math and business and uh, the actual profession has actually been uh, for a while. Uh, it's been there like since like, the 18th century. Um, so it's uh, very structured. The, the education system is very structured with like different exams and stuff and consider I do enjoy the uh, the structural part of uh, academic uh, education and I like academic achievement so I think it's a nice way to say like, it's like oh yeah you're getting exam you're getting uh, you're getting experience and then you get qualified and then your, your path is there so I like that aspect of being an actuary at least at the beginning compare a little bit between the CFA exams and the actual exams. I finished my last actual exam in 2014 and I did my CFA exams uh, in 20, well, the end of 2014 to 2016. So it's like um, more than five years ago. So a lot has changed um, for the CFA exams and also the actual exam, especially with the pandemic as well. So I think like the exam now move on to computer based and they also shorten the exam. So a lot of things have been different. So I would encourage you to go on the official website to determine like uh, to learn more about uh, the exam curriculum or like how long the exams are and stuff. But from what I'm aware of, like the core um, concepts or theories or what they want you to get out of actual exams and CFA exams still the same. Uh, so from that aspect, uh, back then, my upper actual exams, so like the FSA uh, exam for the society actuaries, they have um, one of them I wrote is like a six hours. So they have a four hours and two hour exams. And my last uh, FSA exam was a five hour long, which I think the same for the FSA exam at this point. And the CFA exam back then will be like a six hours. So a few preliminary actual exam will be, I think back then maybe like two to three to four hours. So it's the shorter one. So I would say that the amount of material that you have to study for the upper actual exams and the, uh, and the CFA exam are similar. Uh, for the FSA exam, it's like they had two sittings per year. So one in April and then one in October, November. So sometimes you only have like a five months to study for an upper actual exam. When for CFA exam, um, you could choose to, uh, let's say if you actually do the June exam every year. So you actually can have a year to study for level two or level three. Although I actually did level one in December and then level two in June. And so like I have similar time around five, uh, five six months to study for the level two exam. And then I have uh, a year to study for level three exams. So it's a little bit uh, more time in, in a way with the CFA exams. And I have to say, personally, I find that the actual exams are harder than the CFA exam. In that is like, I don't know, maybe you, some of you may understand, math questions sometimes can be tricky in a way. It's like you study for it and you still don't know if you will pass or not. But with the CFA exams, uh, perhaps it's because I already went through the actual exams, I feel more confident. So I feel like if I actually putting the effort into studying hard for the CFA exam, I would pass. But like for the actual exam, sometimes it's like you put in the effort and you still don't know whether you can pass or not. And um, I think for both of the CFA or the actual exams, uh, they would have some pass rate. Uh, depending on the exam, like maybe only like a 40% will pass, a 45 or 50%. And I think some actual exam is like only like 35% or so. So it's it's not that easy to like actually getting, uh, actually pass the exams either. So 
your own, having a CFA is uh, more popular compared to having an actual designation. According to the CFA Institute, there are over 150,000 CFA charter holders uh, in 2018. Um, and according to the Institute of Active of Actuaries, so the UK one, there are nearly around 70,000 qualified actuaries uh, around the world. Uh, but the society actually showed that they we have only about 30, 31, 32,000 of associate and uh, fellow uh, um, of the society actually. So it means like uh, the remaining um, belong to other uh, actual organizations like the CAS or the IFOA or other countries. So definitely having a CF, um, having CFA is more popular. Uh, but I have to say that like once you are qualified as an actuary, like doesn't matter of uh, is it like if you are. Uh, a, a social, an associate or a fellow like I think your job security is very good because like once you have once you are qualified um, and you have some working experience uh, alongside like there's a demand for a mid-career level actually like you know especially in insurance industry or like a consultant actual consultant patient uh, benefit consulting industry like the job security i think is very high for an actuary and having a cfa it's not like having a cfa then you are a financial analyst not really you can be a financial analyst financial advisor you work in bank investment bank and so on so a lot of times having a cfa is like really like a uh, just the beginning um, beginning of like getting into the finance, working in the finance uh, area. So it's not like there's a one job title or one uh, profession for um, having a CFA, but like getting an actual designation is like, oh, now you be an actuary. There's some weight in it. Again, like back to my earlier comment uh, of like, for me, like pursuing the actual profession is more structure. So I know that like if I pass the exam and then I, I do good work in the company, like my career advancement is gonna continue. And especially for an, in an insurance company, the prospect of uh, an actuary is uh, very great. Like we have good career advancement that to become uh, in the next management uh, of the company. So in, in that sense, I think it's a, a very rewarding career for an actuary. Also because of that, I think it's also much harder to get actual designation because when you think about it, to get a fellow um, of uh, society actuaries or the institute and faculty of actuaries, you're talking about 10 to 15 different uh, events or requirements uh, and uh, it takes like the average will be 6 to 10 years uh, to get to fellow. That, that's not a short time. So it requires a lot of commitment and discipline and sacrifice in the short term in order to get there, in order to like get the long run benefit, rewarding benefits later on. I do, I, again, I have to say like once you become a fully qualified actuary with the working experience, like I think most, most of the time we are golden. What I really wanted to get at is that getting actuary qualification or designation is it's like a similar path to become a doctor. You, you cannot call yourself an actuary until you actually getting qualified. But some people can be a financial analyst without having a CFA. So that's really the difference between these two. And, and so like in a way, we are comparing between uh, apples and oranges when we compare between these qualifications. I think if you have the drive and you feel positive about getting into your education and it helps with your uh, satisfaction overall in life and in your personal professional development, why not? My mom always say that uh, it's good to be busy because then you can stay out of trouble. So in a way, uh, continue education and studying is it, one way to keep you busy and it's a good type of busy. Um, and that is like, uh, you can do it structural or unstructured. So I always strongly encourage uh, to always look into uh, continuing education, uh, whether just taking a course or like uh, watching videos or listening to podcasts to uh, learn a little bit uh, every day over time and it will help you in the long run. I think it's more common for actuaries to get the CFA exam rather than the other way around because when you think about it, it takes so many years for us to get actual designation. So it's like after you already spent five to eight years to go through all the exam, uh, spending maybe another like two to three years in order to get CFA exam. Uh, CFA is it's not so bad, right? 
but I think it's definitely more uh, challenging if you start with a CFA first and like only like two or three years studying and now there's still another five, ten years to go to get the, the actual designation. So definitely it's more daunting, uh, the opposite path, but it's not like I haven't seen anyone doing it. I do have uh, some friends who also uh, have a lot of academic achievement, like a friend who has a CPA and then CFA and then go on to get an associate in fellowship with the Society of Actuaries. Uh, so yeah, I do have a lot of crazy friends who continue to study just like me. My personal experiences studying for the uh, actual exam and CFA exam. Uh, I got the support from the company when I studied for the actual exam, which means I had time off and also uh, exam uh, fee reimbursement, uh, the exam material reimbursement for the actual exams. So that was great. But when I uh, studied for the F C CFA exam, I only got uh, general education support, which was like uh, $2,000 per year. So I don't have study day for it either, so I did take a few uh, vacation days um, before the exam to study for my to prepare for my CFA exam. So the support um, is not the same just because like I was working in the actual role and I didn't really need to have a CFA, but I found it would be beneficial for myself, especially when I'm interested in the risk management area and I don't just want to uh, be knowledgeable in the insurance risk, but I want to be knowledgeable in the investment side, uh, investment risk like the market and credit risk. So in that sense, like I think uh, I'm, I'm fine with uh, using my vacation days and uh, to uh, uh, take some study days for my uh, CFA exams. Um, and but yeah, they, they would uh, reimburse me for the exam uh, study fee. But actually, at that time, I was studying uh, for the MBA at the same time, uh, and I didn't have much overlap between like actual exam, CFA, and MBA. So I couldn't use the two thousand dollar to the CFA exam, but I use it for my MBA instead. So if your company has some sort of general education, uh, definitely ask it and uh, check out and, and uh, inquire your company. And I do know that like. Uh, it sometimes it's also depend on the leader to see if like there's some uh, over long term beneficial for you to have a CFA on top of an actual actual designation. If it's not maybe not in your current role, but maybe if you want to look in a longer uh, term, if you are interested in like more like finance or like risk or investment uh, side of it. So, anyways, this video is quite long and i hope it is helpful for you and uh, if you have any questions again let me know in the comment sections and you can follow me on uh, instagram or facebook uh, as uh, i may ask for feedback for future videos and uh, answer any questions you have again if you find this helpful don't forget to like and turn on the notification button and i will see you in another video uh, have a happy productive week ahead bye now